Hello for you and welcome to your introductory unit or sorry your introductory lesson for unit 3. Now we're talking about reciprocal functions and more specifically today we're talking about the reciprocal linear functions and our goal I'm able to determine key aspects of the reciprocal of a linear function especially asymptotes. Um, so if you haven't done so already, and this is what this says here, I want you to take 15 minutes and take a look at page 148, 149 of your textbook. There's a little investigation there that I want you to go through, and the rest of this will make much more sense if you've done that. So if you've already done that, that's great. You read that on the website and you followed through. Um, if you haven't already done that, go do it. So we're carrying on. Um, we're looking at the basic reciprocal function. That's what this is, the basic reciprocal function. Recip function. Basic recip fun. Uh, some of you remember this as being the creeper graph for unknown reasons. I guess because it creeps really close to the asymptotes. And the asymptote is the fancy word for these two lines here that the function is getting really, really close to, but never actually getting there. So let's take a look at our end behavior. Remember, end behavior means that we follow the function to infinity in both the left direction and the right direction. So we're going to take a look first at the x going to negative infinity. As the x goes to negative infinity, the y is going to zero. That is what this um, line is. That's the y of zero. So this is going to negative infinity, so y is going to zero. Now take a look at this little negative here. That's actually read from below. Now the reason it says from below is because this function is below the asymptote. And that's how we represent it there. Now, looking at it the other direction, as x goes to positive infinity, so we're going to follow along in the direction of positive infinity. We're going to keep going this way. And it's going to keep getting closer and closer and closer to 0 as well. Uh, but this time, it's above. So that's why we've got a plus sign here. That is read as from above. Now behavior at the asymptote as x tends to something. So this is the um, asymptote, the vertical asymptote. So here's our vertical asymptote. We get a horizontal asymptote, which gives us our end behavior, gives us the horizontal asymptote. Our vertical asymptote, we look at the behavior. So as x approaches 0, but it approaches 0 in two directions. It approaches 0 from this side. So if I follow towards 0 going from this direction, what is happening to my y's? Well, as I'm going this way, my y's are getting more and more negative and they're going way, 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 way down. So my y's are going to negative infinity. Now I have to have some way of saying that I'm approaching it from this side. So we're going to use the same notation here, above and below. So these numbers over here, I'm going from negative 2 to negative 1 to negative a half and so on and so forth. Those numbers are all less than 0. So I'm going to use the negative number to signify that it's less than, or sometimes we will read that as being from the left, since we're looking at it left and right here instead of above or below. y is going to negative infinity. Now, as x approaches 0 from the right, I'm looking at the graph backwards this time. Now I'm approaching it from the right-hand side. I'm going this direction. What is happening to my y's as I go this way in towards this vertical asymptote? Uh, well, they're getting really big, so it's going to positive infinity. Now what about the domain and range? Remember the domain is all of our x values. Um, so in this case, x can be any real number, but not quite any real number, because we've got this vertical asymptote in the middle that our x's are never going to be because it's never going to reach them. Um, so we just say x is never going to be 0. And for a range, y is any real number, but we've got this horizontal asymptote that it's never going to reach, so y can never be 0. So having looked at that for the basic um, reciprocal function, we're now going to look at a slightly different reciprocal function. Um, now what do we know about this function? 
Well, the first thing I'm going to do is force a factor out of here so it's easier to see what makes the denominator 0. Because remember, what makes the denominator 0, we can't have a denominator of 0. Um, you learned all about placing restrictions on variables last year. You can't have a denominator of 0. Denominators of 0 give us those asymptotes. Those are, the, those are why um, the function can get really, really close to those values, but never cross. It's because we cannot have a zero in the denominator. So I'm going to make this a little bit easier just right now. I'm going to force out that negative three, and now inside there is going to be x minus five-thirds. And I, f I forced that out, um, so we might be able to use that later. It'll be easier to see what our uh, what makes our denominator zero. So now let's think about our end behavior. As x tends to negative infinity, where is y going? Well, let's stick a big number in. And by big, I mean we don't have to stick in like negative 10 million. Let's just stick in negative 100. 100 is big enough. So if I stick in negative 100, let's see what happens to my y values. So I'm evaluating f at negative 100 which is close enough to negative infinity. <laughs> um, not really, but for our purposes, it's pretty close to negative infinity. So we got 1 over negative 3 times negative 100 plus 5. So that's going to be 1, and I'm violating all kinds of math laws here or for good communication, but I'm just doing some rough figuring here. That's going to be positive 300 plus 5. So 1 over 305. Now that's a pretty small number, um, and it's a pretty small number that's just, it's on the positive side. So it's bigger than 0. Uh, and we know this thing is going to go to 0 uh, because this is really, really close to 0. So y is going very, very close to 0. And what is 1 over 305? It's pretty close to 0. 1 divided by 305, uh, point zero zero three. Now if I stuck in something bigger, like say I stuck in negative 1,000, I'd get a number that was even closer to 0. Um, but also notice that it's a positive number. So I'm going to stick in a positive there because this is going to 0, but it's above 0. Now, I'm going to erase this because as I said, these are just little figurings and you can put them in or you can leave them out. I'm going to figure out what about as x goes to positive infinity. So we're going to go f at positive 100. Well, if f is at positive 100, that's going to be 1 over th negative 3 times positive 100 is negative 300 plus 5, which gives us 1 over negative 295. Now this is going to be pretty close to 0 too. 1 divided by uh, neg 295, negative, and that's pretty close to 0, 0 0.003, and if I stuck in something bigger, something closer to infinity than, closer to negative infinity, or yeah, closer to infinity than 100, like 1,000 or 10,000, I'd get a number that was closer to 0 still. However, it's still going to be below 0, so this is 0 from below. Now how about the range? Are there any y values that aren't possible? Well, yeah, this function is never going to be equal to 0 because for a fraction to be equal to 0, the numerator has to be equal to 0. Um, and since there's no way 1 can be equal to 0, this thing is never going to be equal to 0. So we say y is any real number, but y cannot equal 0. Now the domain, are there any values of x that won't work? That's why I did this before. What value of x will make the denominator 0? Um, if I sub in 5 thirds there, that would be a problem. So x is any real number, except uh, it can't be 5 thirds. That's our vertical asymptote. So this gives us our vertical asymptote because we cannot have a denominator of 0. Okay, moving right along, uh, behavior at the asymptote, Oop, that says y, as x approaches, we're going to have x approach 0 from above and 0 from below. 
So as x approaches 0 from above and 0 from below, remember what our vertical asymptote um, was coming from f at x equals 1 over negative 3x plus x plus, let's go back, what was it? x minus 5 thirds. Um, and it was, oh, sorry, it wasn't as x approaches 0, it was x approaches 5 thirds, because 5 thirds is our vertical asymptote. So once again, that's going to be a vertical asymptote. So we're going to have to fix that. Um, our vertical asymptote is 5 thirds. So we're going to approach 5 thirds from numbers a little bit bigger than 5 thirds and we're going to approach 5 thirds from numbers a little bit smaller than 5 thirds and see what happens to our y's. Now I'm actually going to approach it because 5 thirds is 1.6 repeated. So I'm going to approach it from numbers that are, let's start on this one, numbers that are a little bit lower than 5 thirds. Um, so we're going to start at 1.5 because that's lower than 1.6 repeated and then I'm going to move to 1.6 because that's still lower than 1.6 repeated and then I'm going to move to 1.66 because that's still lower than 1.6 repeated because I can keep putting sixes there. So I'm going to keep adding those sixes and getting really really close to 1.6 repeated. Well what you need to do is actually plug them in. If I plug 1.5 into the question um, and let's just do that right here. 1 over negative 3 times um, 1.5, and remember what the original function was, negative 3, oops, negative 3 times 1.5 plus 5. That's going to equal 1 over, this is going to be negative 4.5, plus 5, which equals 1 over, well negative 4.5 plus 5 is 0 0.5 and 1 over a half is just 2. Now if you do that again, except putting in 1.6, you can follow that through, plugging in the 1.6 in here, and you'll find out that you get 5. Okay, so not a big difference there. Once you put in 1.66, you're going to find out that it's 50. And when you put in 1.666, it turns into 500. So this thing is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So our y's in this case, as we're approaching um, this 1.6 repeated from numbers that are smaller than 1.6, um, it's going, getting bigger and bigger and bigger in a hurry. Uh, hopefully you can see the pattern. The next one will probably be 5,000 and then 50,000, etc, etc. So y is getting bigger in a hurry and it's going to keep getting bigger till it reaches positive infinity. Now what about the other direction? What if I put, put in the 1.7? Well, let's take a look. 1 over negative 3 times 1.7 plus 5. Well, negative 3 times 1.7 is negative, this is going to be 1 over negative 5.1. Um, plus 5 is going to be 1 over negative 0 0.1. And 1 over negative 0 0.1 is negative 10. Now if you put in the 1.67, because that's still just a little bit bigger than 1.6666, uh, okay, um, you'll find, follow it through again, put in the extra 7, follow it through, you get negative 100. Then you'll get negative 1000, and then you get negative 10,000, and it is getting big in a hurry as well, but this time we're getting big negative numbers. So we can say that as we approach five from num or as we approach five thirds from numbers just a little bit bigger than five thirds, this thing is approaching negative infinity. So now it says find the x and the y intercepts. Well, 
to find the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. And if I set y equal to 0, I get 0 equals uh, 1 over negative 3x plus 5. Uh, this is not possible because in order for a fraction to be 0, the numerator has to be 0 and 1 can never be 0. So there is no x-intercepts. How about our y-intercepts? For our y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. So if I set x equal to 0 up here, I get y equals uh, 1 over negative 3 times 0 plus 5. And that's going to go away, so I'm just going to get 1 fifth. So here is my y-intercept at 1 fifth, so somewhere um, very, very close to the 0. We'll call that 1 fifth. And now let's move these asymptotes into place. We said that the horizontal asymptote was at 0, so it's still right there. The vertical asymptote was at 5 thirds, or 1.6. So we're going to pull this over here and say that that is at 1.6. Now, how about this function? We got to put all of these things together. Um, there is no x-intercept, so it can't cross the x-axis. And let's take a look at its behaviors. Its behavior at the asymptote, it says, as I approach it from numbers less than the asymptote, so the vertical asymptote, as I approach it from this direction, it has to go to positive infinity. So it's up here. As I approach it from this direction, it's going in this way. It's going way up there. Now, as I approach it from the um, from numbers just a little bit bigger, it's going to negative infinity, so it's going down here. Now, I actually put this dot on the wrong side. I put it at negative one-fifth instead of positive one-fifth, so it should be down there. Um, and now, how about um, our uh, end behaviors that was over here. The end behavior says as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to 0 from above. So as x goes to negative infinity, this direction, y is going to be at 0, but it's going to be above. So it's going to be over here. And it was at the opposite direction the other way. As it went to positive infinity, this went to 0, but from below. And now I just have to sort of connect up the things because I kind of know what this looks like anyway. So when this goes down, it's going to go through there and then go way off that direction. And over here, it's going to come in and go like that. So there's a rough sketch. We just fill in the dots after that. Okay, and that completes this lesson.